Hey, here's a video for 3.1.5, and it's kind of like completing the web, but our goal uh, today is finding equivalent ways to write a portion. Now that completing the web part will make more sense kind of as we go through this. I encourage you to pause here and do this red section and to come back uh, to see your answers. All right, in here, um, we do this. Uh, when we write percents as decimals, since it's 4 per cent, or 4 per 100, this is 400, so 0 0.04, 0 0.76, 0 1.20, 1 1.00, or 1, and then 0 0.325, okay? And then on the right, writing these decimals as percents, that's 31%, because it's 31 hundredths. Make sure you put the put the percent sign. This is six percent. This is one hundred and sixteen percent. This is zero percent, and this is forty two percent. Hopefully, you picked up on a pattern as you did this. That whenever you move on the left side there, when you move percents to decimals, you're just moving that decimal place two spots to the left, right? So, the decimals best decimal place was here. 1, 2 to get 0 0.76, right? Um, same thing with, you know, the 32.5. We moved it 2 over. And we do the reverse when we move a decimal to a percent, right? 0 0.31, we went to 31 point, 31, and then the decimal, right? Okay. All right, what if, let's uh, move into some of our newer stuff that kind of ties into what we're working on. What if the denominator is not 100 or 10, right? Like this one here, this 1 fourth, right? Well, we can make that, that can't we? We can make it, um, we can make it a, a decimal out of, uh, or I mean a fraction out of 100, can't we? So we put the 1 and the 4 in here, right? And we can use that giant 1. Our giant 1 is going to be 25 twenty fifths. Right, to give us 25 hundredths. Okay, why don't you try this one with three fourths? Pause that video and come back. All right, I hope you're at least this far, right? And so, then what is the giant one? This one is also 25 twenty fifths to give us 75 hundredths. Okay, all right, now try this one. Pause and give it a try. All right, so what's the giant one? It is 20 over 20, right? And that'll be give us 40, right? Now let's try this one, 3 eighths. Go ahead and pause and give it a try. Well, I bet you struggled a little bit trying to find the giant one for this one, right? Um, you know, if you, you tried 10, if you tried 10 in here, this would have gave you 80, right? And that's not going to work. So we could have tried, you know, an 11 in here, right? 11, that would have gave us 88. Still not big enough. Let's try that again. All right, let's try 12. 8 times 12 is 96. Um, still not big enough. So let's try 13. 13 times 8 is oof, 104. We got a problem, right? We got a problem, um, and it doesn't work out perfect. And you'll find out that it is actually twelve point five and twelve point five, and you can do that, you know, if you needed to. So um, twelve point five times three. We haven't done uh, much for decimal multiplication like this. Do five times three, which is fifteen. Three times two, which is six. Plus one, that's seven. Three times one is three, and when I have one number to the right of a decimal place, I need one number to the right of that decimal place. So that would give us 37.5, okay? But when we run into tricky numbers like this, 3 eighths, and these numbers right here, you're allowed to use a little trick, okay? Let's go to this one. How else could we find this? Let's go to um, our calculator. All right, let's do, uh, what we'll do is we do 3 divided by 8, and we get 0 0.375. Now let's go back to that. That was 0 0.375, or you see it there? There's my 37.5 hundredths, or 
right? Or if you looked at it as 375 thousandths, okay? And you can do that same thing for these problems, like I said down here, three sevenths, five sixths, one third, two ninths. And when you do that, and let's just say we're converting them to that decimal form right now. If you're doing that and you convert that to the decimal form, you, um, I usually like to keep it as three in case I have to change it to a percent. So for example, the three sevenths will be 0 0.413 it rounds to because it turns out to be two eight. Whoops, I think I wrote that incorrectly. That is... One, four, two, so that's two, eight, and that rounds to nine. There we go. Let me make sure I did that one right. Uh, there we go. And then um, next one, five, six, is 0 0.833. And if you notice that if a three repeats or anything else like that, you are allowed to put this line on top of just the three in this case because the three is the part that repeats. The same thing happens here. This is 0 0.3 and it goes on and on and on forever. So our trick is we put a line on there and that tells anybody who sees that number that that is 0 0.33333 dot 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 goes on forever. Now since the, on the left one here, since the 0 0.83 only has the line over the three, this would be 0 0.83333, right? Going on and on and on. Now, just as a side note, if it said 0 0.83, and I want this in a different color, and the lines are over the 8.3, then this one actually equals 0 0.838383, dot, dot, dot. Notice the difference in that one, okay? It's where that line is, and you can have the line over, you know, more than one um, if you need to. And, <coughs> excuse me, and you can actually do... Um, the 2 divided by 9, and you'll get 0 0.2222, okay? All right, so that's our way for us to write repeating decimals, repeating decimals, okay? All right, so our big part about today is called the portions web. And if you take a look at the portions web, the upper part is the fraction, the lower part's a decimal, lower, um, and the lower right is the percent, and right in the middle we put words. And this is the main part about our day today is finding um, equivalent ways to write this portion by completing the web, all right? So let's put this kind of into action. What this is is a good way for us to try to organize all four of these, and then maybe I forgot to say it, our words, whether we write it or not, um, for, for the exact same portion. So when I say fill out a portions web, like this one right here, I expect you to give me the fraction, the decimal, and the words for 72%, okay? So um, usually when I see 72%, uh, the fraction is really nice, right? It is 72%. Now, I want you guys to start reducing, to start reducing those fractions, okay? Make them as simplified as possible if you could. Um, is it wrong? No, but it, it is helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm divide these. What I notice is both numbers are even, so I'll divide them both by 2. And 100 divided by 2 is easy. That's 50. And then I look at 72, and I say 72 divided by 2 is 36. How would you get that so quick? Well, half of 70 is 35. All right. All right, they both are even again. So I'm going to divide them both by 2 again. 36 divided by 2 is 18, and 50 divided by 2 is 25. Okay, I don't have any more even ones there, and it actually looks like I have reduced that as far as I can. And that's the way I'd like you to start writing your fractions, in the most reduced and simplified form. Simplified as a way to ask for it, that fraction to be reduced. The decimal is quite simple. Since it's out of 100, it'd be 0 0.72, right? That's what we were talking about earlier, right? Moving that decimal place over two times. But I could also use that fraction to help me get that decimal. In the words, we could write 72, 72 hundredths. THS, right? THS in that one, okay? You could write it as seven tenths and two hundredths. That's fine too, okay? All right, let's try this one down here. One eighth. Ah, remember we had been just working on that eighth thing just before, right? So let's go back here. 
let's do the 1 divided by 8, and that is 0 0.125, or 125 thousandths. So that decimal then is z uh, 125 thousandths, right? And now when we talked about writing this as a percent, we could write that as 12.5%, right? Words, I would write 100. Oops, that's a little close. 25 thousandths is how I would write this one. I think it's the best way to put that. Okay. All right. And I might, yep, our last one here. Write this uh, as a fraction, decimal, and percent for um, um, zero. Uh, 0 0.45, right? So um, to write this as a fraction, that is 45 hundredths. I would love for us to reduce all fractions as much as possible. So 45 and 100 both have a 5 in them, right? So let's divide them both by 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9, and 100 divided by 5 is 20. And that is reduced as much as I possibly can. The percent is... You know, we could look at it like this, 45%, or we can use that to give us to 45%. In the words, you could write this as 9 twentieths. You could write it as 45 hundredths. Right? There's all kinds of hundredths. Whoops. Hundreds. Okay, um, all those are good options, okay? All right, so the last question is kind of a wrap-up for today. In what two ways can you change a fraction to a decimal, right? Well, the very first part was when we used the giant one. So we want to get it to a fraction over 100 is one option. Or we can divide... Oops, divide the numerator by the denominator. Okay, those are our two options for today. Um, so let's go back and just uh, talk about what it is that we were looking at today. And we, in 3.1.5, we're looking to complete the web, finding equivalent ways, ways to write a portion. So we have use the giant one to write a portion in a different way, but we've also used this new thing called the portions web to write it as a fraction decimal percent and in words.